past. Stand up. You know, in the end, we just, you know, we, if you're not going to let us do at least what we do, we just, we aren't yeah. going to take that risk. And it's it. It's going to be started in 1960. Hi everyone, thanks for waiting. I, I was setting up the meeting a little seems late. A little crazy the way it's going to be set up on my shelf. So. Yeah, I think it's I'm afraid it's probably going to be short lived. That looks like Eric. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. We well, this yeah. thing looks like we're sitting on the back on the stern of an aircraft. <laughs> 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 looks, this table looks huge. This table is 80 feet long right now. <laughs> and very symmetrical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me pull up. Technology is wonderful, huh? huh? Oh, yeah. Yes. What's occurred in the last 30 years? Should I tell them to keep me huh? Should I tell them to turn it down a little bit? Are they doing rehearsals? Oh, no. Well, there's still some little kids in there. It's like killing their ears. <laughs> an old lady and go down. Hey, you kids. Eh. I don't know. Do we have to have a quorum to proceed? We have one. We have a quorum. We only have five yeah. people left, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're, we have 100%. Four? Yeah, so Eric and Carolyn, um, Amy had to resign because she took a job in Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sue also resigned yesterday because oh. um, she said she was just too busy with life and everything. So wow. she, yeah, but it so take on all our responsibility, you know. <laughs> so Amy and Sue are both can you guys see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, great. And Carolyn, are you here? We can't seem to hear you. Uh, I can hear you. Oh, okay, I can good. See you. Great. Yeah, we can hear you too. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Yes, we're ready. Thanks. Ready to call the meeting to order. <laughs> yes. And the first item on the agenda would be to approve the minutes from our May 26 committee meeting. And does everyone have a copy or you can see it on the screen? Mm -hmm. We need a motion to approve and a second. Uh, I was absent, so I'm gonna have to rely on y'all. <laughs> What? He's, he wasn't here at the last meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll make a motion. You can certainly vote to approve it, but. <laughs> Mount seconds. Kathy okay. seconds. Oh, boy. Any corrections, changes? It seems like we spent a lot of time talking about the potential of the free house change. Yeah. This is our main topic. And uh, we invited them to come. At the next meeting, but we are not here. I, I can provide updates okay. um, later on. Yeah, about that. Okay. So, unless there are any changes or corrections, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Minutes stand approved. Okay. Um, the next agenda item would be to elect officers. Um, I would make a nomination of Jeff Martin for chair. You tried to get away with that last time. I uh, that works pretty good. <laughs> and um, if we're going to do it by slate of officers, I would nominate John Bechtel for vice chair. I'll second both nominations. Any other nominations? There are not too many folks here. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. Field power. There you go. Okay. 
Uh, so does someone have to second it? Uh, to... Well, it doesn't need to be second, but oh. um, Eric did second it. Oh, okay. And then it's just hearing there's no other nominations. Then I guess hearing none, <laughs> we take a vote. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Lynn Pickens here in Landmarks. <laughs> like. Do you have any candidates for replacing Amy and Sue yet? Uh, we do not. So I messaged the mayor. He's the one who appoints all the new yeah. um, committee members. And so he's sending out a search right now. But if any of you guys know people who are interested in the Landmarks mission and have to live in Middleton, I believe, um, you, yeah, you're welcome to send them to the mayor. Okay. Yeah. Is that who you want us to send them to? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. The mayor? Well, he, yeah, he's the one that. Okay. I know he <laughs> picks it, but. Yeah, okay. there's, there is online, there's a form. If you, you're interested, you can fill out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the application, something. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> kind of, yeah, you kind of forget about it. <laughs> Okay. But the next item would be to look at these landmark plaques and the modifications and the material. Eric, did yeah. you have a chance to look at them in person? I have not. Did I bring them down and put them? Yeah, we can you can put them over there. We'll give you an up close and personal look here. Yeah. <laughs> Just be careful, that equipment looks expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we can just put in the materials first. So this is the original material that all the current landmark plaques are. It's like the stainless steel. Um, it's a lot heftier if you can feel it a lot more, it feels a lot more firm. Um, that other one is like the aluminum like mix. Um, it's really, it's really light. It feels like plastic kind of, you know, when you feel them. Yeah. Um, and then the, the this first one is like metal. Um, so, no, no, no. The new one, the new one is the one on our right. Yes. Uh, that one. Uh, okay. Yeah. The one that's light then. Yeah. Okay. And I wonder if we could use this. Well, if you put it in front of the, the, the lens of the camera, you can see how the glare is. Uh, yeah. Let's glare. So that's the old one. And this is a new one. Kathy brought up a good point. Let me see if I can get it. And when you look at it at a certain angle, there's kind of a rough, it's, it's not a texture, but there are lines in it. I don't know if it's, it's the laminate that they put over the top. I think it's brushed aluminum or something. Yeah, like the brushed aluminum. Um, but it can make it, if you see it at a certain angle, it can make it difficult to read. And I, and I didn't even think about it. I should have come down here and taken these outside and looked at them. Under yeah. the sunlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not bad, and I think people could could make it work. You know, I don't think it would be a deal breaker, but it's just a little, you know, it's got a little more business going on in the background. What's the cost differential? On we this? have a cost. Uh, uh, <laughs> the cheap guys both ask at the same time. Yeah. The so you know, this... I don't have to keep those up the whole time. I, at least I for one have gotten the full flavor of it. <laughs> okay, Carolyn, you good? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, I don't mind standing here the whole. <laughs> yeah, so the the stainless steel, the old one, that's about like thirty five hundred dollars to print all twenty five or so that we have. Uh -huh. um, this the newer one, that's the aluminum, that's about fifteen hundred. So, okay, so it's about two thousand. Yeah, wow. yeah, two thousand. Oh, I cheaper. love her. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and, and if they're going forward, forward if you want to try and maybe get some other buildings on yeah. the landmark. Um, you say that'd be about thirty five hundred for all of them. Yeah, for the old one, mm -hmm. and then fifteen hundred for all of them for this this new one. Hmm. So less than half even. Right. The aluminum laminated. They look good. No, what was the, what was the the re, the vendor that you spoke with was in favor of the the cheaper one, and what was their reason for that? Yeah, so they um, the vendor is Alpha Graphics, and they um, 
like this is their like in-house printing. So that's also why it's cheaper. Um, they don't have the stainless steel um, on hand. So that would be like a custom order. Um, and then they also go with this one. They said it lasts a lot longer. Um, really? just, yeah, I was also surprised because it, it kind of, it's a lot lighter. Um, but they said, you know, they've had, um, they've made signs like the past 10 years and they look exactly the same. They don't tarnish like the stainless yeah. steel does. Well, it's aluminum. So, right. You know, yeah. It should last. Mm -hmm. So if you use the right kind of screws and bolts, now if you use the steel bolt or screw, then you right. yeah. have and, rust in all four corners. Yeah. And they, they've been installing these signs the past 10 years and they said they haven't really seen much, much wear and tear. Mm -hmm. Well, will they do they stand behind it with any type of warranty, like 10 years or whatever, that if it if there are any issues with it? Um, I'm not sure. I can definitely ask them about that. I would ask them if they're confident in it, they should, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one on a share apartment. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Local, yeah. And we used to make our BFW sign and it's held up very well, actually. It's okay. different. It's not like that, but it's a uh, some sort of composite material. And okay. It's actually lasted. It's amazing. I'm surprised at how well how good it looks. And it still looks vibrant. Yeah, yeah. In front of the post. I mean, we put that up in 20, I think like 20, uh, 08 or 09. Okay. Compared to what was there before, which was a metal sign. <laughs> So it's amazing. They can do. Yeah, they've also made us other stuff. So we've been real happy with their service. They made us signs for mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. Well, they did our three signs over at the Rally House too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, and it's keep a, it a middle tent. It's a laminate on top of something. Yeah. I forget what the under layers are. But yeah. It's sealed up beautifully. Okay. Do we have anything to approve us other than the material? Um, so there's the material and then um, Carolyn also sent in um, a small revision for the Pierstorf plaque. Um, so I was thinking we could vote on those two separately. So if you guys. Well, the materials I would make well, go ahead, too much money. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. I, no? go ahead. I don't, I, you know what we want to do. <laughs> uh, oh, I'll make, well, I'll make a motion that we approve the aluminum signage. For the material. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Done deal. Okay. That's great. Mm -hmm. I just want to look for the warranty, though, see if we can get something. Yeah. Out of it. Definitely. <laughs> on, a, on a side note, they changed the uh, uh, commission, commission makeup and now they have one alder. So I'm not sitting as a citizen anymore. I'm sitting as an alder. So I don't want to. You know, not twice. Oh, really? Thing was going on. You can still vote too. Oh, I can still there vote, and I can take your concerns right, right to the. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sitting on here like. Does that uh, mean sitting. we always have to have an alder on? No. Oh, oh, you you will always have somebody an alder. Okay, from the council, so you'll have a connection to it. Okay. Uh, every other I committee know. is like that. You've so, been here since. Yeah. Got every other yeah. committee. <laughs> I'm so, learning. We assumed you were the older. I, I thought you're you're already very interested in it. So I thought you just no, on. I no, I started as as president of the historical society. Oh. So um we talked a little bit about this um on here. It nowhere on here actually says Middleton Landmark. That's true. So we we're thinking Middleton Landmark might be on the top okay. or you know, even make like if we wanted to, we could make this a little bigger so that it blocks on both sides of Middleton Land. You know, if this was a little bigger than Middleton Landmark would fit, it you know, it's just a little okay. Detail. What's our timeline, uh, Daphne, on getting these produced now? I mean, have yeah, well, since you guys have chosen the in house material, they can get these printed probably by like the end of the month, beginning of July. Um, and then, well, I would first have to send them edits. Um, first, but then they can get them printed right away. And then um, I, I believe like about 20 of the landmarks, we're just gonna, you know, replace them. And then there's about um, five or six of them that either need a boulder or um, we need to like replace something. 
Um, and so those will take a little bit longer, but I was aiming for August to have them. Is it done. too late for us to go through and edit again or read them through and see if we love the, the wording or not? <laughs> John and Kathy raised an issue earlier there before you came about some aspects. There. Well, again, here it says the former high school has been remodeled into a private home and more recently a child care facility. We're wondering if that's even necessary. We're landmarking this because it's the first high school, and then this could be dated very easily. We don't really need mm, that part of it, or you know, right. those kinds of things. And what, what it is. Some of those issues, maybe we. And I, take I know you at. sent it to yeah. me, but it's not. It was like a PDF, and it was hard for me to to edit. To yeah. Edit. So um, would it be easier if I sent it as like a Word doc for me, and then you guys be. can just like edit? Probably so. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I tried to you know get one of those free <laughs> PDF like, no. converters, and it was real messy. <laughs> uh, I, I I I agree with Kathy, and it's certainly it, they're they've been edited a lot, so they won't be date themselves like within 12 months, like this other older sign did, mm -hmm. where it says as of 1983, yeah. or today in 1983, it says. Uh, yeah. We've got to watch those kind of stuff. Yeah, and so it's better, but I think Kath brings up a good point about saying what the building is why? now, because okay. we want to convey why it's historic. And as soon as it becomes something else now our sign is already out of date mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it just to me it seems kind of like oh well it's a child's church center but obviously it's a restaurant and right. <laughs> yeah. um, so that and then if we did the Middleton landmarks on the top are you thinking Kathy that it would be would that symbol be up top, like every sign, would that be just a bigger symbol or would it be a symbol next to Middleton Landmark? That's a and good then... question. But you can, yeah, I think. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, this could either be bigger like, and then have Middleton Landmark in this next to it, or this could be yeah. up here and then Middleton Landmark in this down below it. So all the signs would be universal with the symbol and Middleton Landmark across the top. Maybe. I think that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I so like the too. logo, middle to landmark, landmark, and then one yeah. underneath. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. I know you've spent a lot of time. And I know. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> damn, he's just he's being so good about it, but I know you want to kill You're over there. <laughs> well, I mean, I know once we print these, we want them to last like yeah. 30 yeah. years. So I would, yeah. I would rather we do the edits now. Yeah. Well, I like, think you should do a word document mm -hmm. route it to us and give us a deadline and say yeah. okay i want comments by okay. from all of you i think such and, such. <laughs> and if you don't get it but yes. i think the word doc would help a lot mm -hmm. yeah it's yeah our fault yeah. is that okay with you eric to take another hard look sure I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, you you guys are rivaling my former law partners with the round. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Are you at Fordman yet? No, I went out on my own. I've got my own practice now. Oh, you do? Whoa. Did not yeah. know that. Yep, it's been a year and a half. Wisconsin Dealer Law is the name of the practice. Okay, so that's what you did at Fordman, but you're doing this on your own now. Yeah, and and I was doing other things at Fordman, and this is you know. A marketing focus. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Gotcha. When I got his membership check for the Historical Society, I thought it was junk mail, and I just about... <laughs> Did you hope that they had it? <laughs> what was this? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> That's okay, Jeff. I could have saved the 25 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so All right. I can do this and then we'll have, I'll send out Word doc deadline. Tell us to get our acting gear. Our next July meeting. Can, are they going to want a PDF of this to do the printing? Is that what you're? Probably. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I if, you want me to, if you want me to do some of the formatting with the middle to landmarks and stuff, I can do that kind of thing too if you send it. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. Okay. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I've got, so, I've got a much lower rate than. <laughs> <laughs> so by so then we'll make the decision at the next July meeting, 
and then okay. it'll just push it back a month. I think our deadline deadline is December technically because for, of budgets yeah. for yeah the the tourism budget is now the only risk funding. is that if we all show up with a list of changes <laughs> what well, we sit here and we argue <laughs> 20 minutes on each one you got to be careful that we don't get bogged down Can you track that. changes on your document we do we would track changes and then we'll know who's two and what so. um, but are we sending them all to Daphne or can we send them all can we send them all to should, each other? Or is that... probably go to Daphne. Yeah, yeah probably to that. me. Okay. Yeah. The text is one thing. Yeah, but we can. Or you could divvy them up and send four. No, four, I think four. I think I think having <laughs> more eyes on it. So. And there's one on the Pure Store House, Carolyn here. That she yeah. She's... Yeah. Can you zoom in a little bit? More? Yeah. Carolyn, do you want to talk about? Well, um, basically what I was doing is changing the date. Um, the original date said that it was constructed in, in the present house was constructed in 1890. Um, and I'm not sure where that date comes from, from some earlier narrative that the historical society used. I, and I, I just, I just uh, accepted that. Um, but more recently, I was looking at a couple of photographs that we have that were taken of the Pierce store family. Um, and one of them showed, yeah, there it is. Okay, well, it's a little hard to see, but Mr. Pierce Dorf is holding a little girl in his arms there. And that's Marie Pierce Dorf. And she was born in 1895. And the house in the background is clearly the Richard Green house and not the Pierce Dorf house. So it was the, the it was not built in 1890, and the second photograph we're able to date um, from a, a code that appears on the back of the postcard, so that it could have been no earlier than 1904. Uh, and again, it's the greenhouse there, and and not the Pierstorf house. So I went back and I looked at the uh, intensive survey. Oh, this is interesting down here at the bottom. This is the picture of the greenhouse that was taken by uh, Andreas Dahl in the 1870s. And the fence that appears in that is the same fence that appears in these later pictures. And, and then after they did build the house, after Pierstorf did build the house, they incorporated that fence into the, the ornamental trim under the porch. Um, and I said, it would be nice if that could be reused. Uh, and in fact, uh, and some of the artwork that those people sent us, the Restoring Hope people sent us, uh, it looks as if they had that idea that they were going to use that, um, that fence um, detail. So in any case, uh, the date should be not 1890, but about 1908 in order to be correct. Carolyn, when you say the greenhouse, is that the greenhouse, are those the buildings that were moved to Henry Street? That's right. That's right. Maybe those should be landmarked. <laughs> I, think, I, think so. I think so, yes. And then we would, yeah. Then we would have the full circle of yeah, the, the history. Nice walk. Yeah, yeah. So that's that was my only comment there was changing the construction date. Well, I think we should do that. Yep. Good sleuthing. What's that? I say good sleuthing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Carolyn's the best sleuther. <laughs> Um, I think we would have to vote on that, I guess, since it is an edit. Well, just incorporate it into all of your comments. Um, <laughs> okay. for the for next, next, for next, yeah. Just, just yeah. put it in there. And we'll read <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Thank you for doing that, Carolyn. Yes, it's, you're like CSI Middleton. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. All right. Appreciate that, Carolyn, for doing all the digging. Anything left to discuss on the plaques? Um, so, that was all I had planned. OK. 
Okay. Can I see what you have on the plaque? Oh, oh, yeah. For this one? Yeah. Yeah, it says around 1890. Okay, so say around. The house originally on this on the site it was built in literature pain. Okay. Yeah, so you're saying these two should probably be. What do you think? I, mean, our... I think it's interesting. Sure. Do you leave that last part of the sentence where they are still occupied as private residents? In right. See, that's, that's like another that's, say. That's where we take that off. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to need that part on there. Um, Anything that references what it is today, I think we yeah. really ought to look carefully at or okay. say, eh. Yeah. Who knows? It could be a pottery studio or something in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Carol, Carolyn, do you remember, and I don't, maybe this isn't even something that would be put in there. When they came in to, to talk about the Pure Store House and the remodeling, was it, did somebody make the comment that when, when Pure Store lived there, it was never a single family resident? It wasn't ever just single family? I, I don't recall that. Okay, then, okay. I suspect I suspect some of the subsequent owners after Pierstorf um, moved out may have had um, you know they may have been multiple residents. Okay. But it would have been it would have been built as a single family residence. Okay. Well, it looks like they're getting ready to get started on that too. Wasn't it? Are yeah. they? They took the fence down around the outside. And oh, hell yeah. Oh, I see that. So. All right, then. Let's okay. move on to item number three, I guess. This Historical Society 2022 Certified Local Government Grants. Yes. So this, Abby sent it to me. Um, and so this was from Jason Tish, who we've mentioned before from the Historical Society. Um, and so he was just letting people know that there is this grant. It was the same grant that I presented that when I went to that one conference. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is just like a letter of intent. They wanted to know, you know, who has projects that they would like to do. Um, and then Abby thought it would be a great idea for our East End Historic District just for signage. Um, they said the grant funding can be used for surveys, architectural surveys, um, nominations, public education projects, which is what I think the signage could be. Um, and then like a historic preservation plan, design guidelines or training for for you guys, I guess. Is that something you are interested in? Well, we talked about the Terrace Avenue. Uh, we'd need to do a survey there if we were thinking about a historic district, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would be worth, I think that would be worthwhile and for our signage. Of, of, yeah. yeah, that's something we've always had on our, hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, some of those homes are getting to be a little run down. On the last, uh, on terrace, yes. yeah. They get down to where they really are on the left hand side. Yes. But it's, what, one thing it said but, in, the, and I think our, our ordinance is that, or was it in this, this, um, the conference you went to that if you're a part of a historic district you can't opt in or opt out if it's a historic district you're in and that you don't the owner doesn't get a lot of yeah which is okay um yeah i don't want to get on top well it's, in some cases they construct the districts they sort of gerrymander them so that you know they they um define the boundaries so that some properties that are non-contributory are, oh. are um, you know, eliminated from it. Okay. Yeah, and even in the East End, you know, there's some like pockets right. where mm -hmm. like some of the houses aren't, you know, part of that. And mm -hmm. so it kind of just like hops over a house mm -hmm. or two. Apparently the first step is to submit a letter of intent. Right. Yeah, so I wanted the that, that just sort of holds our place in line to the says. state. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then later we can can file an application or not, whatever we finally decide to do. So, 
Right. And I can contact Jason to see if, you know, if we could maybe do the two projects at once. I don't, he didn't say we could, we only get one, but. Um, it could give him a, something to choose from. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I don't know how much a survey would, uh, if for them to come and survey the houses on terrace, how much something like that costs. So, so go ahead. Well, just because we were talking about a historic district, I remember when we all like, I don't know, a couple of years ago, we're all like, why? We actually have a historic district. And Eric learned, looked it up on his <laughs> phone. I'm like, oh, son of a gun. But we have an ordinance for landmark, for Milton landmark properties but we don't have anything for this historic district Basically. there's no guidelines right now there's nothing to prevent someone from buying historic homes in this historic district and yeah. demolishing mm -hmm. it we have no there's there's no right am i correct Right. No, that's that's not correct because the the East End Historic District is on the National Register, and so it gets its protection in that way. But who would who would stop them, Carolyn? If I bought the property and I came in to get a building permit right now, and I'm going to demo the house and build a new modern home. Um, um I think the State Historical Society is responsible for that. They. I think, the, I, I think they're I'm getting the, my permit from the city. I'm saying there's no trigger in the city right now. No. Hmm. Right. I mean, right. the only trigger would be I would get the permit and then I would have to be like, oh, this is one of the houses. <laughs> yeah, it's not, no, a middle not that that is a foolproof step. <laughs> right. probably not. I, in other words, we have nothing in writing. There's no ordinance and there's nothing that a resident can refer to what are my limitations can i paint it any color can i paint my historic house hot paint um you know can i demo it can i i sure i don't need a permit to paint i don't think i think for east end i think carolyn is right they do have like more protections um as a national I think they would yeah I, I feel like as homeowners they would get you know either something in their deed or you know something like that no <laughs> i don't I don't know. I mean, I'm seeing, right? I don't know if you know, it's a blue house over there. I don't know what street that's on. Someone painted their house like that. Oh, for, for Robin's egg blue or something. Yes, it's and very, I'm sure that's not, that's, very blue. It's like blue, like on the, that lake on the map right there. I mean, it's, it's, that on, blue. it's on Bristol. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you see the blue house and you know what I mean. So, but there's nothing at the city level, right? right? So, right. who's going to catch it at the city? <laughs> it would have to be me or Abby right now. Just be yeah. told, I think things. I think there must be something on the deed, you know that. Uh, right. right. I think it's like, a bold assumption. Well, yeah. like with the free house, um, like they came in with their design plans for plan commission, and then I was the one that pulled it for landmarks because yeah. yeah. otherwise, you know, they would have just kept running yeah. with it. With well, I think that was with Pearsorp too. We said we think that that should have reviewed by landmarks, whether that right. was on their radar or not. It's one thing we know when they have that plaque, they know that they're a landmark. Yeah, right. Yeah, the right. landmark buildings, I'm not concerned. I mean, we have this, a process yeah. for that. This we isn't don't a, have a Middleton any... land. These are, it's not a Middleton district, so. Right, yeah, it's not a Middleton. It's on a national. Right. There's a couple of, there's another, other, Buildings in Milton that are on National Register that aren't landmarked by the yeah. city. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the, it would uh, be up to somebody in the building uh, inspector's residence. office to flag this somehow, right? I mean, if they just sign <laughs> off on the permit but, and say, hey, go for it. Yeah, demo permits in Middleton are very easy to, you just pay like 500 bucks yeah. and you can demo. Especially if you said you're going to build a high rise apartment. <laughs> yeah. Boy, they, Snap that up and I mean, but if you're going to if you're going to place it with another single family home, I could see that someone absolutely just approving that. And if it's not something that someone just happens to know, off the top right? Of head, yeah. But you know, if you hire someone that just moved here from Wanaki, they're not even gonna right. Now we have the ordinance to fall back on for the Middleton landmarks, but we don't have anything for this for not for the district, right? Right. I think the historic pheasant branch has. <laughs> design guidelines they do have guidelines yeah 
Well, but anyway, that's that's what triggered yeah. this whole thing was the historic preservation plan and design guidelines. Mm -hmm. I think maybe a more, and I don't know if there are people that do it like for a living, but a more robust landmarks. You know, we had that long discussion with the club tavern, a landmarks air, a historic area versus a historic building. Yeah. Or just weeks before the election, this. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and then maybe guidelines for the for the historic. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure they have the verbiage already laid out. You know, in, that they, the, they'd say this is what an ordinance should look like to get a. Yeah. Well, do we want to pursue this grant opportunity? Do you know how how detailed the grant is? I do not. Some of them are awful pain. <laughs> right, yeah. So I think, I mean, the reason why he's sending this out now is so he's offering to like help, yeah. you know, craft our grant application and all of that. And then the deadline is in December. So I was hoping we could, you know, we already have like two or three ideas. We can maybe like rank which one okay. we want to, you know, prioritize. But, um, uh, what needs to be then, stated in this letter of intent? I think honestly, it's just we have this pro like if we got this we're idea, interested. we're going to do it. Right, exactly. That's about it. Yeah. And the other, I would include, in it, so I would like to have some sort of historic preservation plan and design guidelines. And then also, and if we can use grant money to, you know, hire an LTE to reconcile his historic or Middleton landmark buildings or properties with state properties designated properties with mm -hmm. national historic registry properties because we have some that are on all three we have some right. that are just on one mm -hmm. and really wouldn't I, I, my feeling is if they're on if they're on if they're on Middleton then you know they might be on state anything that's on the national registry should be on those right i agree <laughs> and anything that's on state should be on the milton right. should include everything that's state <laughs> and national i don't know if all our properties should be necessarily the other meet way. To, yeah meet the other way but that am right. i reading that right i mean it well, well, making sense yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the good part about that is if they've made the national registry and i don't know about who's on state but They've already done the documentation, which makes right. it a lot easier for us. Yeah. You know, we won't have to do all the, the digging if they've already passed yeah. that yeah. threshold. But there are a lot. The, the things, the thing, the buildings that are on the National Register are the Rally House, the Depot, the Stricker Pond area, right. and the First German Lutheran Church. Um. I don't think the church and, was and the district and the district, right? I thought there was one. More. Oh, oh, and one more, the Heim Heim Mound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think that the church is on. No, the church is out of town. Oh, it's, it's like in, in the town. It's in the town of Middleton. Oh, the one on uh, Old so Sock and new 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 Yeah, yeah. So a lot of the ones that list you sent me, they're either in the town or like some are even in like Wanakee. Um, but yeah. I still haven't gone through all of those yet. Um, yeah, and then some are state like that insurance building, Middleton Insurance Building. That oh yeah, that's on there actually, which I think is a really cool building. I, <laughs> I like, um, but that's on a state for architecture. Okay, it's just it's on. I think you asked Daphne about where, where is this building that you're talking about? Right there, on Park and University, a little. Oh, yeah, yeah. It says yeah. Middleton Insurance Company on the side. That's what's what? Uh, it's on a state historic registry really? for architecture. Yeah. It is? Yeah. <laughs> Who's the architect for it? <laughs> I, I don't I don't remember, but I remember it was there because it I like that building. Fish. That's just the yeah. like if I ever saw that building come up for sale, I asked my wife if I could buy it. She said no. But, <laughs> you know, but, look into that. Go for it. Uh, I like it. I like it. I don't know. Yeah, I've never been inside, but this one is the Lutheran Church is on the National Register, but as a middle, just because their address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if they use zip code. 
Well, it's and Middleton, it's, Middleton and the same desires are floating why it's that. Yeah. So then do we wanna maybe, we can maybe prioritize like the East End district as a whole. So doing mm -hmm. the signage and um, getting that like district design guideline yeah. as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then would that be, you know, our, our number one priority yeah. if, if we had to just choose one? Yeah. And then the second one might be like surveying all our current landmarks and then our reconciling them. And, right. And then maybe so the priority, right, is that sub area. And then second priority would be to reconcile and then maybe cut perhaps kind of citywide some guidelines for. Well, I guess a little more robust ordinance, uh, a little more Right, detailed. it goes back to the ordinance, yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it sounds like everyone is interested in at least pursuing sure. this. Shall we put forth a, a little letter then, a letter of intent? I think, honestly, I just have to email him. And let let oh, him know okay. that we okay. have. All right. If it's that simple, why? Yeah. <laughs> but if he if he asks for a full letter, I can like draft something and then also bring it to our next meeting. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Cool. Could you query him also about the process so that if somebody wants to tear down one of those um, houses in the East End Historic District, uh, <laughs> how? We need to keep you up. Yeah. How would you know? up tonight. John's gonna, flip. <laughs> John's gonna flip houses in these things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. <laughs> All right. That's like that. Any other business? Brick building uptown where they paint painted black, something to feather with it, wasn't it? It was Where's a red, national registry. Oh, oh really? No, and I can't hear about it. Building, they had to take all the paint off oh, of the brick building. Gosh, really? <laughs> so your last item was an Amy Hoopman send-off, uh, but now there was we also have Sue as business. a send-off, right? Yeah, we have old and new business yet. Yeah, so there are some things I wanted to update you guys in the old new business. So one okay. was the free house. Um, John, they sent someone to, to trim the bush. Did so they? yeah, it should be. It's. I'm gonna inspect it. It's like right. maybe like two inches over the sidewalk still because it's it's dense. You can see like the root. I'm gonna go trip on it. <laughs> so I'm not I'm just joking. Okay, well, thank you. So yeah, did, I emailed yeah. the person you. Asked. <laughs> yeah, so they did trim it. Um, but I I did talk to Tim Thompson. He's one of the owners. Um, about what we had discussed at the last meeting about, you know, the door is like the big hang up. And he basically said, if he can't get the door, then he's not going to do the bar and he's not going to do the cold porch extension. Okay. So he so, really wants to make a new door. Right. Yeah. And I told you, I told him, you know, there are like at least half of you guys were not for that. And so I think he, at, at least when I talked to him last week, he said he was just going to scrap it and not not do anything. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping we were interpreting that drawing wrong. But no, it was not. definitely turn a window into a door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, I also mentioned, you know, you guys were okay with, you know, if the window became like a service area, but he said that's against like health code guidelines or something. And so. we, we were okay with the porch to the patio. Yeah. Right. And I told him that, but... Not if there's no door, he doesn't want to do any of it. That's what he okay. said. Okay, so right. that's the end of that deal pretty much then. Right, okay. yeah. So Just that's why they're not at, at the meeting. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they might come back and want to do a porch or something, but for now, those are done. Snow will be flying before that. But... <laughs> um, and then the second thing was Kathy wanted to begin the process of landmarking the St. Mary Street, Street pillars. pillars. The pillars on Hubbard. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. and yeah. actually before Amy left, she actually sent me like a draft of like a landmark designation application. Mm -hmm. And I think I sent uh, you it did to send you. it to okay. me. Good. And it it's got a, it's good information. It's like here's what our ordinance is, and it has to fit. She's actually got the ordinance verbiage in there and and um, which category it fits in and you check boxes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So yeah. yeah, and I was going to fill it out for. St. Mary's or St. Mary's, the Mary Street Pillars. And I don't know whether 
calling it Mary Street Pillars or Hubbard Avenue <laughs> Pillars or what's the best way because most people don't know that that was on Mary Street right. or the Elm Lawn Pillars because it went to the Elm Lawn School. Right. So that 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 walkway is that technically a street? That was is that, that was platted as Mary Street. Mary Street. Well, I think that's something that's interesting that might go on the signage. Okay. I think, but as far as like what goes, yeah, well, do, you call them L, do you call them Hubbard Avenue Pillars? Well, here it, it would have the address on it, yeah. you know, so they would know it's on Hubbard. That's yeah. true, yeah. But, and then in the verbiage point out that this was running south from here was this walkway was once Mary Street. Yeah, and we didn't get the grant to do the little kiosk thing uh, oh, that had the picture, you know, we were thinking of, like out in front of the Got some photos in the Middleton Times Tribune, no? Yeah. Oh. You saw those, right? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> Many times. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, so we can like fill out the that I'll fill out if we can look at yeah. it. See if, if yeah. Well, and it's also to see if you know the application is good because if, if there's anything we need to tweak on the application and everything. Yeah. yeah. Now is our time to do we'll that. Do yeah, yeah, this would be a good test. Um, and if we're having a meeting in July, I can have it filled out and sent to you so you can include it in the packet. Yeah, okay. yeah, that would be great. Um, and then the last topic I wanted to bring up was the depot. Um, tourism is doing a refresh of the exterior. And they told me that they're going with the exact same painting company, same colors. Um, but I wanted to run it by you guys first since... <laughs> It is a landmark, and, and they wanted to run it by you guys as well. Um, the same colors that's there now, mm -hmm. yeah. which Carolyn would argue are not authentic at all. Oh, really? Hmm? Oh, she signed off too. Though. Yeah, Carolyn she just left. Really, because I thought that's why they chose those because- Well, they... that's what Mike says, but Carolyn says no. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that raises the question of Val Steele, who was the old tourism director, she could have liked those colors and said this was <laughs> right. <laughs> but it I, was one color when it was the senior center. And I have said drilled in with my increment board to see what the old yeah, colors Yeah, can she get the two microscopes? Like we had forensics <laughs> to look at yeah. yeah, a house painter, a forensic house painter. <laughs> Paint boring. <laughs> so when is the depot going to reopen as a tourist center, do you think? Did they tell you that? No, they haven't told me that. I mean, so, they're still, I think, doing renovations. Well, they're the still thinking about painting the inside where our right. new headquarters will be. Yeah, and then um, I think they were trying to reach out to the Wisconsin Historical Society as well to see if, because I, I don't know if they have any interior regulations. Mm -hmm. um, so they were trying to figure that out. So it's national. I don't know if you're aware of right. our new well, footprint in the depot, the Historical Society. Well, we're getting the front corner. Oh, good. We had the back half, yeah. But we got evicted. Oh, you got in. I got evicted. But they got, got evicted. The doors. They got the front front door. Because the tourism folks wanted more space, so they're having a new office and a conference room and everything in the back. So we're we're getting the front we're like roughly the on the map there. about a quarter of the building, but in actuality, it's just uh, going to be a wall and a corner. And we're going to have a couple of display cabinets, and I've got a committee working on displays that will emphasize the railroad history and a few other things of early Middleton. And so we'll have photos and so on. We don't have much memorabilia, railroad memorabilia, because we didn't accept it years ago when it was offered to us by a woman who she and her husband were the depot Oh, really? Conductors. I'm not sure that's the right word, but they ran the depot. Agent. Agent. Depot agent. That was also Yeah. And she had a lot of old stuff. And if you want to see it, you can she wanted to give it to us. So she gave it to the Mineral Point. Oh, the Mineral Point. Okay, that's right. Point. Now, we have subsequently been in touch with the museum and Mineral Point says, can we have some of it back? And they said, the heck with you. Oh, <laughs> oh, <man. no. laughs> yeah. They don't have, have they can't at least they can't show us any written agreement that she actually said you can have this, this, this. 
but they're pretty sure that she didn't want us to have it anymore. So well, I think that there were some hard feelings. Yeah. That that, so the, that the way she offered it, and it was yeah. the, the, like, we can't promise you anything. I mean, she they were it was good pieces because Mineral Point I think has a very extensive. Yeah, they do apparently. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm going to go down there someday and photograph some items if they can identify them as Middleton items, and we'll. Well, they should be able to have the accession from Del Rosa. Ishbella, what did they call her? Something like I'll sweep one or two under my arm. And yeah, get <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, that's but the that's history true. of that place right now. Yeah, but you, you know, for a dollar a year for your space at the depot, you're doing well. I think we are, <laughs> and in fact, we're going to do better hmm. because our space will now be in the front. I right. A, where well, a tourist will walk in and immediately see our displays. Right. Well, they in the front there, there. someone had donated a, a boatload of lanterns of real yeah. life, and they're along the wall there, mm -hmm. and that looks kind of cool. So but they may destroy those or dispose of those. Why if they're trying to bring uh, I'm just saying? <laughs> <laughs> but not it's not our doing, but the tourist mm -hmm. folks. Have said they may not put those back up or keep them. Are they down now? I don't know. They're going to paint the inside, supposedly. And they've yeah. dealt with several painting contractors, and I don't know that they. Well, you could at least use those in your display. That's then. why we can't put our displays up yet. Well, you could use those in your display then, the railroad. Mm -hmm. now, well, we've got a few landers. Well, we're, we'll bring we decorate. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, yeah. that's where we stand. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys, well, if you guys want to see their whole painting schematic, I could also bring it to the next meeting, but it's just, they said it's just going to be color. the same color. <laughs> well, they're doing a branding, so they'll probably be needing a new sign eventually. They did ask about the plaques. Um, and then, because they have the, they have this one and then they have the national one. Um, and then they have the museum. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's about that big. Yeah, museum at the depot. Yeah, so I, I mean, I told them they're getting a new plaque that will be refreshed and everything. Um, and then, yeah, I'm not. They didn't mention anything about the sign, but if the sign changes in size, it would also have to go to the plan commission too. I think. Well, it, we we went around a long time on the sign they have there. Okay. And then, so those are all my my okay. old new business. You guys have any additional? Thank I'm, you. I have a question for you. Uh, so this is the seventy fifth year since the BFW bought the the old Fitzgerald Branch School and created mm -hmm. the post. So it's been there seventy five years. Oh, cool. So we're thinking about having an open house in August, and we'd like to have. We have some pictures from when it was a school, mm -hmm. um, but maybe you don't find any like information that I could just blow up. I just want to put like on a whiteboard or something, I, a large poster board or something inside yeah. the post. Because a lot of, you know, it's, we don't know operators of bar or anything. So people often ask about going inside and mm -hmm. nothing. <laughs> but you know, there's I you know yeah people drive by all the time too, so we're you're thinking about um, doing that in the office. Well, we do have a number of old photos of the place. Yeah, uh, you might come by Saturday. The museum will be open from ten to one Saturday, and there will there's going to be a woman there. I'm going to be out of town from the March to the fifth of July. But maybe after that. No, no, come by. Okay. You can plot through the files and and if you need okay. one, we can I can copy it for you. Okay. <clears throat> cool. And let's just see who wants to fix our stone foundation. What are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know. It's a landmark. You, you I know. I've warned them. There, well, well, there is an ordinance that says they have to remain. Yeah, I know. it's it's a, uh, a, a we like to we like the historical nature of the building. In fact, we got the uh, Sonny Simon, who's the post is named after. His sister gave us his high school letterman sweater. Oh wow! So we have that framed, hmm. and we have a article in the Middleton Times from has a picture of Sonny with the two football coaches right before the homecoming game. His oh. leather helmet oh, wow. and all that, and then um, 
they use, oh, and I had a picture you gave me of the uh, uh, school, oh, right. 1939 mm -hmm. high school. And then they use that same football picture when it went missing in action. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's probably the only picture that cool. the newspaper had. But so we have all three things up there in this, in this sweater. And he, he lettered in football, baseball, basketball, and guess what the fourth sport was? Boxing. Yes. Oh, well, boxing. Wow. High school boxing. High school boxing. <laughs> that was big back then. Really? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, Middleton Cleaners did a great job on the sweater for free. Mm -hmm. And then Gary framed it for us. Too. That's very cool. Yeah. Good, Way off good, topic. good, good. Okay. All right. Anything else to hash over? Well, since Amy and Sue aren't here, we can't really send them off. <laughs> Bye, Amy. I liked her email. Well, Hootman, that's a good last name. It was Hootman, Hootman, Amy. I forget what her email is. And Sue just joined us, but then she resigned right away, huh? Yeah. They don't have to have to be residents of Middleton. Oh, really? It, it's not, it's not, a, I mean, the preference is given if you had two candidates that were substantial equal, but. Um, well, then we could get Carolyn back on. It would be because she has the expertise. Carolyn has the expertise. <laughs> and if she wouldn't mind. She comes to most of our meetings. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know she wasn't there. Exactly. <laughs> if we maintain you know this hybrid thing, she was right. Yeah. Well, yeah. she resigned because she moved from Middleton to Madison. Yeah. She felt that that the rules were such that she no, couldn't that, be that's, that's how they're all written, is that it would citizen or if they needed to be some, you know, I think yeah. we can. You might. Uh, Send her a message and inform her of that, Kathy. Uh, I'll, I, yeah, I'll double get pull Because I think it would be valuable to have her on the board. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just know because I think it was like the mayor recently has only been really appointed Middleton residents. I didn't know it was preferential. Well, That's she has a history here. It. Yeah. She obviously she has, has done a lot of research. She knows all she the does history. Most of her work. <laughs> <laughs> She's our best researcher, Barbara. Yes. <laughs> yes, I offered to sign a letter of support to attach your application. I'm constantly getting emails, anonymous or otherwise, from people that, uh, what about this? What about that? And I <laughs> forward them all to her because she yeah. don't dig in. I have one other fellow who's a good cemetery guy. <laughs> Steve Drake. Oh, would he like to be on Huh? <laughs> you know Steve Drake. Yeah. Yeah, and he's my other go-to guy for research. Does, does on, he know landmarks? Huh? Does he have an interest in landmarks? Uh, no, he might be. Uh, he's technically not a resident of Middleton. Well, he lives just south on uh, one of those first streets off we of Gamma. We don't want to have a foreign problem for your historical society. But, uh, we wouldn't let him. Oh, you have like 15 <laughs> members on the board. Oh. <laughs> okay. I make a motion. Uh, there's no other. I have yeah. a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay. Steve's last okay. little bit of research, if I may, was a yeah. mysterious cemetery that someone had spotted on a little Pheasant Branch Road. When you cut off University and before you get to the new road that goes out of the shopping center, yeah. you know that right. little piece there. Someone right, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off here. My my right. connection right. so right. Thanks. 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 Thanks.